Joining us now, Melissa Armo, founder of the stock Swoosh. Melissa, hello. Great to have you here on this in the middle of this holiday season. Um, let's start with this. Is this normal correction territory, or are there concerns for something far more ominous? I don't think there's anything ominous going on, but the problem is we've had so much selling recently, really since October the selling began, and then the selling really started earlier in the month in December, and we've really almost never looked back. Every time the market has tried to rally, it's failed. And even today, if you're looking at the markets right now, we gapped up, we were opening higher this morning, and we're in danger of breaking uh, the previous day's low, even though it was a half day on Christmas Eve. If we break the low from Monday's trading, we could we could have another sell-off day. Yeah, that's it's really interesting to think about, given the fact that we have low volume this week as well. So uh, what are the biggest concerns for you that you're watching with the market right now, Melissa? Well, some of the concerns right now are really what's going to happen in 2019 with the tariff issue with China. And also, is the Fed going to continue to raise rates? You saw a huge sell-off in the market when the Fed announced that they were going to raise rates in December. And even though everyone anticipated that that was going to happen, I think the market was hoping that they would hold off until early 2019, because before that, we had selling coming into that point. Everyone keeps saying, buy the dip, buy the dip. That's not the way that I look at a chart. That's not the way that I would teach people how to trade. Do not buy the dip. And let me tell you, here's why. Because... I don't know where we hold at this point. The Dow, I mean, I'm looking at the diamonds, which is the ETF for the Dow, could fall all the way down to 180. You could also see the SPY, which again is the ETF for the S&P, that can fall all the way down to 200. I'm telling you that there's no reason to think that the market's gonna hold here anytime soon. Now, I do think that we could have a rally that could come before the end of 2018. We only have a few trading days left. It might be a one day rally, it might be a two day rally, it might just be one single day, but don't think that all of a sudden one rally is gonna reverse all of this because we've had so much selling that's come in. And the problem is with selling, and it's different from buying, you have panic. You rarely see panic buying. It's something that's so rare that it hardly ever happens. In fact, I've never seen it happen in the market, although it could happen at some point in the future because so many people have sold out. When when they see the market turn around, you might see panic buying to jump in, but panic selling is very common. And that's what you saw in October, and that's what you saw in December, and that's even what you're seeing right now. And so I want to get your reaction. You're, you're talking about buying on the dip, and, and you know we've heard many traders shout that, especially over the past uh, year and a half. However, at this point in time, we've recently seen the president also take under that mentality. Uh, do you believe from his position, from his seat, the president is in a position to be shouting by the dip uh, at a point in time where there is so much uncertainty in the markets? Should, he, should the president of the United States be even saying this? Well, I think the President Trump is, is trying to let people know, listen, the economy's strong, don't forget that. And remember, he also tweeted that he really didn't think the Fed should be raising rates so quickly. And, and I thought, we don't know what would have happened if Trump hadn't tweeted that. Part of me wonders if the Fed would have held off on raising rates if Trump hadn't tweeted that. But the Fed felt it more important to, to, to go ahead and do it because they said they were going to as an independent entity. And I just can't help but wonder if they wouldn't have done that. Then they felt the need to do it because Trump tweeted about it almost against Trump. Trump wants people to know the economy is strong. The economy is strong. The market is strong. The market, to me, technically speaking, is still holding the up to <coughs> even sold off. You, well, you have to put it into perspective. You look at the rally that we had in 2016 since Trump was elected into 2017, the market power trended. So any amount of prolonged selling like this, whether it's for one month, 30 days, or even six weeks makes people panic because we almost went straight up. I mean, we really did go straight up. We had so many new highs almost every day, every week in the market in 2017 that what's happening now, people aren't used to. But really, if you go back and look at the market, we, we have periods where the market goes do, do, do. The market is, doesn't usually go straight up, just like it doesn't usually go straight down, and we're not going to go straight down forever. I'm, I'm warning people don't buy the dip because it's not a good way to trade. It's not a good strategy. You don't know where we're going to stop. And right now, you'll be buying weakness in the market right now, this moment. It doesn't mean the market isn't strong overall, and that's Trump's point. The market is bullish overall. We're strong, but temporarily the control right now is to the bears. So if you're, if, for example, if you're a trader, you could be shorting the market almost every single day and making money. And that is the danger here. Traders are going to get 
lazy and they're going to think, oh, I can just get up in the morning and even though the market's gapping up, I can short it because right now we're falling. Mm. So it doesn't mean you can do this going forward. And I will say this for 2019, everybody needs to be on their game because I think 2019 is going to be a very volatile year in the market, more so than 2008. This year is going to look like a little lamb. And, and next year is going to look like a lion for volatility. So all of this selling could be completely 100% reverse just as quick as it came. Not right now, not today. And I'm not saying before the end of the year, but I'm saying lickety split. It could happen in a pre-market gap up, and particularly if we get these things resolved with China. And remember, Trump knows things that we don't know. We're not privy to. He's negotiating with China. Right. So there's reasons that he may be saying these things. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it off when he's tweeting out there by far. No way. All right, here's what I want to ask you. I remember way back in the day when the, when Gary Cohn was officially on his way out of the White House and Wall Street was like, yeah, no, that is certainly not a good thing that we want to be told. What would investor reaction be, you think, if the president took the rather extraordinary step to, to say, hey, Steve, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, get back to Hollywood to produce your animated films. You're no longer welcome here in the White House. If he fired Steve Mnuchin, what would the reaction be here in, uh, when it comes to investor reaction, Melissa? And I don't think the market would have a problem with that. The only thing the market's going to have a problem with about any employee in the federal government is Trump. If they try to impeach Trump or indict Trump, then the market's going to react negatively to that. As far as this person, that person, the other guy, the other girl, I don't think the market is going to have any prolonged reaction to anyone leaving or staying with the exception of President Trump. Well, let me, let, me inter let me come in for a second then. Okay, because I am of the mind, I mean, I'm sure... President Trump is going to be impeached this year. I have no doubt. He's going to be impeached in the House. I can't speak for the Senate. He's, we're going to have the greatest, sh the biggest show of all time. We have not reached the third act of this saga. I'm convinced he will face robust impeachment proceedings. The entire world will be on the edge of their seats by August of 2019 watching this, perhaps. If that happens, what happens to Wall Street, you think? It would be terrible for the market if that happened. So I don't know why people are gunning for that. That would be absolutely ridiculous. The market has loved Trump. Even now today where we're trading at, we're up since he got elected. I don't think that would be good for the market at all. I don't know why anyone's gunning for that. The Democrats should focus on their election for 2020 and getting someone else in against Trump. And Trump only has two more years left. Everyone is focusing so much on that. They should be focusing on getting their job done, doing a good job, let the market be where it wants to go, get their issues resolved with China, and find somebody else that the Democrats want to win in 2020. That's my take on that. I try not to say political, but since you mentioned it, I'm not so sure Trump gets impeached. But even if he does, it would be bad for the market. And I'm just saying that not as a political person. Sure. I'm saying that it's a market person. It's a good perspective, and I appreciate your candor on it. Absolutely. <laughs> Melissa Armo, founder of The Stock Swoosh, thanks so much for joining us here, as always. Happy New Year. Very much you. to you.